Okay, let's do this. In three, two, one. It's Thrive Time. people welcome and welcome back to thrive out loud okay and thank you so much for taking a minute of your day to spend time with me if you are brand new on this channel if you just happen to stumble upon this channel thank you so much for giving it a minute please do consider clicking on the subscribe button join the family click on the bell notification so you can know whenever there's a new upload if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for taking your time to spend time with me i really really appreciate it like comment subscribe click on the bell notifications and consider sharing with a friend you never know who might need whatever it is that we're talking about on here now i know i know hear me out i know my hair's not done i'm looking a little bit messy but hear me out i was getting ready and i got a call from one of the students i used to lecture so she basically wanted to know like what goes on in the civil engineering industry what goes on in the outside world like what is it like really apart from you know what you're being sold or the ideas you're being sold so i figured let me have a sit down talk about this it might probably have a part two and three as well i don't know but since she wasn't the first person to ask about it i figured maybe this is information that people could really use so for starters how did I end up in the civil engineering industry okay so I went to a technical high school right and how I ended up there is backtrack a little bit sometime when I was 12 my uncle was in a technical high school and I was always interested in what he was doing I mean besides always being good at drawing always being artistic always being creative and always finding my way around a drawing book and a pencil I was really interested in what he was doing he told me that the subject is called technical drawing and I'll understand it later at some point along the line I kind of lost interest because obviously that's not a thing we're doing in school it's not a thing I was readily exposed to so I just figured ah you know what maybe maybe some other time right then time went on time went on and lo and behold i ended up in a technical high school so from grade eight through to grade nine it was you know normal generic subjects i really hope i can remember all of them but your normal generic subjects your languages your maths your physics your sciences and what else was there your arts and culture your lo the likes you know most you know most standard bank procedure i can then we get to grade 10 so before grade 10 i needed to basically um pick what is called a stream so i'm not sure how it's done now and i'm not sure how it's done now you know with the whole new system going on but back then you basically picked what is called a stream so in our school you either had a technical stream you had um a sciences stream i think there was two of those if i'm not mistaken and then you had the like the economics guys the accounting guys but yeah obviously my mind is a bit foggy now so basically with the economics and accounting guys those are the ones that deal with money your accounting your economics the monies that's where the shmanies is and then the sciences group there is a group that kind of merges a bit with the accounting stuff and then there's a group that you know did i can't remember but but there were people who dealt with like basically your physical sciences, your life sciences, your biologies, your I might I might be butchering this because I didn't do it, but you'll catch my drift. And then there was the technical stream, which is obviously what I was more familiar with. And in our technical stream, right? there was either the civil, the mechanical, or the electrical guys. There was like three substreams in that. So we all did the same subject except when it came to um the subject that determined this three streams so there was maths there was physics there was english there was a home language um then there was lo then there was how many subjects did we do was it eight or nine yeah then then these are the main subjects that we all did right these were the main ones and then the civil guys got civil technology and engineering graphics and design which is basically technical drawing i'm just not sure what it's called now then the mechanical guys got mechanical technology and I think they also did the engineering graphics and design. I think they did. And then the electrical guys got 
um, information technology and electrical technology. Might be butchering it, but I kid, it's not what I'm familiar with, right? So obviously, I form part of the civil group, and my subjects then comprise of like basically English, Spady, um, maths, physics, LO, civil technology, engineering, graphics, and design, and that would be my life for the next three years in high school. So grade 10, grade 11, grade 12, those are the subjects I did. And I kind of had an idea of the careers that you can do or the career paths you can take once you complete school, but I didn't really have as much information as like looking back as I thought I had, right? So I was a very creative person and in as much as I loved technical drawing and I loved whatnot, I was then at that point, I was only interested in, I'd say the aesthetics of civil engineering. So I knew I wanted to be an architect and that was it. That was literally it. I was not interested in all these other things. Maths and physics, I kind of enjoyed them, but obviously they'll sometimes serve hands. Grade 10 came and went and I performed, you know, quite well. Grade 11 came and grade 11 was my hardest year in high school because obviously there was a lot of family stuff going on in the background and they affected my performance. And then grade 12 came and obviously by the time you get to grade 12, you know that it is time to take your stuff seriously, right? So I was signed up for extra mathematics lessons just to make sure you up your game because if you are going to be applying to universities in South Africa, and you want to do an engineering course, I bet you they will be more interested in your maths performance as well as your physics performance and then the other subcategories fall under that. So extra maths lessons every single day and yeah, I'd really, really recommend it. And I don't regret a single minute of it. Even if you believe you're generally good at a subject, I just feel like giving it more uninterrupted time just adds the little bit of sugar and spice to it. Because the thing about being good at a thing and you know you do your homework you're done with it and you get everything correct is that you don't yeah we could say you apply yourself but you don't get you don't necessarily get an opportunity to kind of challenge yourself to be in a different environment where you're not doing the homework that all different subjects at the same time you get like a chunk of about two to three hours to focus strictly on that subject and you get to ask any question you may have and i feel like that is what improved my performance a great deal right so matric came and matric went so by the end of the year right based on my performance throughout the year and the subjects that i was doing but then my vision came clear to say okay i'm definitely going into this industry but then i still didn't really have as much information then there was a i'll call him a family friend i'll call him a family friend there was a malume who was a mechanical engineer i believe and there was a time when he sat me down and basically discussed career paths. Because the thing about our African families or our, our South African communities is that the exposure, man, if you are not exposed to a certain line of work or to a certain lifestyle or to a certain certain something, you just, you, you, you kind of become blindsided to it. You might walk into it blindly or you might shy away from it just because you're not familiar with it. So this is my lume was a mechanical engineer and I told him that I wanted to be an architect because you know I'm really good at drawing and whatnot and whatnot and he was like yeah you're quite right you are really good at this but you are also really smart and the thing about architecture is you are not involved in the ins and outs of basically the structures that you'll be designing you are only involved in the aesthetics of it you know and that it took me aback but it got me thinking to say okay so um, when you're an architect, I just can't remember the analogy he used, but he said, when you are an architect, we basically only involve you um, when we want to make the house look nice. But when you are a civil engineer, we involve you from the beginning to the end. We want you to be involved in basically the strength of the structure, the structural integrity. If the structure will stand the test of time, if it will be able to withstand, you know, winds and rain and whatnot. And if, you know, the people that want to occupy that house can actually can be there, if the structure can serve the purpose it's been designed for. And then I knew it right then then to say, OK, you know what? Civil engineering is the way to go. And I applied to several universities i think i applied to uj to vut to what is the other one university of free state and where else 
and uj was very quick to respond to say yay we're having you on board i remember i received my response while we were still in school like during matric based on my grade 11 and grade 10 results and then yeah so i was like oh okay cool this is great no problem and then end of matric end of end of the year like final final exams came around and you know you know the nerve-wracking experience of writing final year exams knowing that like this is this is it like this is it however this turns out will basically decide the fate of your life right then obviously that's december and you spend the whole entire december in anxiety in agony did you had it say man like why you know you're just there worried about you know which direction your life is taking did you perform well did you not and obviously everyone knowing that you were a matriculant and everyone's just adding on to the pressure even when they don't really mean to be adding to the pressure but the pressure like would you please just stop the pressure then obviously january came and i think our results were published around the first week of jan i don't know how they're doing things now but i can't believe schools have already reopened and matrix matriculants that 2022 don't have their results yet but basically before everything happened our results were released and obviously there was that early morning um shebang at the garage because you want your results da, 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 da. then later on going to school to fetch your actual results and then life can go on then the papers came out and you know obviously the excitement you find your name in the newspaper you've got a couple of distinctions this is amazing this is great news it means i can still pursue my dream of studying civil engineering and from then on then i decided to pursue it at the Val university of technology selfishly i wanted to be as far away from home as possible and there was just something about an area where you don't have any relatives that stuck out for me so that is where i decided to go then i think registration week was around the second week of jan around what are you 13 14 somewhere there and registration on its own is such a stressful event so we traveled down to the val the day before we were going to register um the next day so the next day came we woke up bright and early and there was a connection somewhere somehow don't say i told you this but you know a little trick a little trick a little trick is getting someone who works there someone you can trust and then what you do is you basically give them all your documents and then maybe call them in Kenyana and then you basically just let them run with it because the thing about a person who works there is they don't have to queue because they have a staff card they have access to every every single room there so they can basically go there um, register for you play pay your registration fee even your res registration or whatnot and then come back to you with your proof of registration and your timetable but don't say i told you this right so we got there and and there was a malume of course who helped us and he basically took my documents and my bank card guys i'm just you know what actually backtrack a little bit don't do it don't do it because i've heard a lot of horror stories about like what i did but i think the bright side was that this person was a family friend and you know he did the right thing so he took my bank card and he went in with like my metric um results my this my that like basically all your documents your id metric what what your um your acceptance letter that they sent to you and 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 then we went and chilled there by the lawns like the kids you see on the prospectus then we waited and we we're basically waiting for his call to say okay i just did this now i'm waiting to proceed with step bun bun step bun bun i think we chilled for like a good hour hour and a half and uh, or two it could could have been more and then he basically came back with everything including my bank card i saw when the um, when the registration fee went off and my heart nearly stopped because i i am new to money and it's already growing but anyway story for another day so he registered and he came back with all my stuff and yeah then i think class was starting the coming week if i'm not mistaken because classes normally start like the last week of jan slash first week of feb i'm not too sure when it's happening this year because everything is kind of moving back and that was basically how i ended up in the vut as a civil engineering student in the next installment i will cover my journey as a civil engineering student in vut from first year second year then i think i'll take you through my internship to graduation and then being in the actual industry do come back for more thank you so much for tuning in don't forget the house rules see you next time
Bye.